Good day, students. I am Mark Mendoza. You can call Mr. M. Let's mark up your math skills today. For this video, we will be discussing limits. But before we proceed to that topic, let us have first a brief introduction about calculus. We know for a fact that functions can be used to model various real-life situations. Therefore, we say that function is an important aspect in mathematics. However, there is an area in the study of functions which we have not discussed. Our world is dynamic where everything is changing and continuously moving. Although we have witnessed a lot of the functions depicting real-life situations or quantities, we tend to forget to study the rates at which functions change. Here is where calculus enters the picture. So, what is calculus? Calculus is the mathematics of change. Now, let me show you some pictures and illustrations to further explain the concept of calculus. In the illustration above, you can see the difference between a regular math problem and a calculus problem. For the figure on the left, the man pushes the box with an unchanging force and it goes up at an unchanging speed. On the other hand, the figure on the right shows that things are constantly changing. This pertains to the steepness of the incline and the force exerted by the man. Here's another illustration of comparison between a regular math problem and a calculus problem. The illustration on the left can be solved using a well-known theorem called the Pythagorean theorem. However, this will not be a big help in solving the length of the hanging cable on the right. This is where calculus comes to the rescue. So now that we are set, let's start with the fundamentals. We need to know what a limit is. Calculus is a process of applying limits to pre-calculus topics. In other words, understanding of limits is fundamental to the study of calculus. We will always mention this word. What's the word? It's approaching. To further explain the concept of approaching, let me give you an illustration. Imagine that you're going to watch a basketball game. You choose seats. You want to be as close to the action as possible and have the best view of the game. Take note that you cannot be actually in the court and join the players, but you will be close enough to describe what's clearly happening in the game. In calculus, approaching means close or near to a certain number. Is this clear enough? Now let us apply this to functions. Finding the limit of a function is finding a real number L that the function values approach as the independent variable x approaches a certain real number A. In short, as x approaches A, y or f of x approaches the limit L. So, the limit here simply refers to the value that the y values approach as to make the x values approach a given number A. And remember, we can illustrate limits using different approaches. Our first approach in finding the limit of the function is through the table of values, where we choose values of x near a from either side, meaning we are getting values from the left of a and from the right of a. The question is, how do we find the limits of a function with the table of values? Let's discuss a few examples. For example number one, Let's find the limit of the function 2x plus 3 as x approaches 2. Using a table of values, we assign values to the x column which are close to 2 from either side, meaning from the left side of 2 which is represented by the table on the left, and from the right side of 2 which is represented by the table on the right. The table on the left shows numbers which are less than 2 but very close to 2 while the table on the right shows numbers which are greater than 2 but very close to 2. For the table on the left, let's evaluate the function at the given numbers and observe the values of f of x from top to bottom. That is, if x is 1, f of 1 is equal to 5. If x is 1.5, then f of 1.5 is equal to 6. And so on until we get x is equal to 1.999 then f of x would be equivalent to 6.998. It shows that f of x approaches 7, meaning as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the left, f of x gets closer and closer to 7. Now, we'll do the same process for the table on the right by evaluating the function at the given values of x, starting 
from bottom to top. Now we can see that if x is equal to 3, f of x is equal to 9. If x is equal to 2.5, then f of x would be equivalent to 8, and so on until we get x is equal to 2.001 and f of 2.001 is 7.002. Observing the values of f of x from the bottom to top, we arrive at the same observation that f of x approaches 7. Meaning, as x gets closer and closer to 2 from the right, f of x gets closer and closer to 7. So we can conclude that the limit of the function 2x plus 3 as x approaches 2 is 7. Now, please take note of the proper way of writing the statement in symbols. We write lim, which stands for the limit of, then, followed by the given function, which is for this example, we have 2x plus 3. Then below lim, we put x, r02, which means x approaches 2. And finally, we write equal sign and then the limit of the given function, which is 7. And how do we read this again? The limit of 2x plus 3 as x approaches 2 is 7. Here are two things to remember about the limit of a function. Let f be a function and let a and l be real numbers. First one, as x takes the values closer and closer but not equal to a, on both sides of a, the corresponding values of f of x get closer and closer to l. And number two, the value of f of x can be made as close to l as desired by taking values of x close to a. Then, l is the limit of f of x as x approaches a, written as this one. For our next example, we'll do this in the same way we did example number one. Note that the first thing you need to know is what the number x is approaching. And based on this example, that is zero. Next, you set up a table by assigning at least five numbers on each side that is very close to zero. Make sure to arrange the numbers in either descending or ascending order. Also, note that in my choice of numbers, I considered 1 and negative 1 as numbers farthest from 0 from each side. This is very important because if you choose numbers that are not very close enough, the y values might not show the limit, and you might have difficulty figuring out the correct limit. Moving on, evaluate the function of these numbers using a calculator, then observe the outputs. Does the output values approach a certain number? And is the number the same for both sides? If yes, then the limit exists. In this example, the limit is 4. Now that we're done with the first two examples, I want you guys to try it out. Please pause the video and try solving for the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2. Now, let's see if you get the correct answer. The answer for example number 3 is, the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2 is negative 4. Here's another one. Pause the video and answer the problem. The answer to this example is the limit does not exist. Congratulations to those who got the correct answer. But why is the answer the limit does not exist? It is because a limit must be a real number, and infinity is not a number. Infinity describes something endless or not bounded. It simply means no limit. Let me explain this further by using the table of values in example number 4. And this endlessness is evident in the numbers in the table. For the table on the left, as x approaches 3 from the left, the output values are increasing without bound negatively. So we may say it is not approaching a real number. However, we may say that it is approaching a negative infinity. Then, for the table on the right, as x approaches 3 from the right, the output values are increasing without bound positively. So again, we say that it is not approaching a real number. Instead, we say that it is approaching positive infinity. Overall, since the output values or f of x do not approach a real number, we simply conclude that the limit does not exist. 
So the question is, how do you write down if the limit does not exist? You may use the acronym DNE, which stands for does not exist. So this is how you basically solve for the limit of a function using table of values. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something today. See you in our next video.